Good evening. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Amy Burkett. Let's start tonight's show with a question. What's the first thing you did this morning? Most of us would probably say we went to the restroom, brushed our teeth, or brewed a cup of coffee. Now think about how difficult it would be to do all those things without access to clean water. Here's a bit of trivia for you. The average family of four in the U.S. uses 400 gallons of water per day. We expect clean water when we turn on the faucet, but for many people around the globe, clean water is a luxury. Carolina Impact's Danielle Koser shows us how a Charlotte startup could help provide water to millions of people who desperately need it. Sparks flying, wheels turning. Two UNC Charlotte grads tackle a project with the potential to change the world. So what's behind me, we have literally designed from the ground up. Justin Sana and Chris Matthews say this hunk of metal, steel, and plastic could hold the answer to the Earth's clean water crisis. They call this small-scale desalination system SOROS, short for Swell Actuated Reverse Osmosis System. I can't think of a better way to kick off an engineering career than to say that you've designed something that's helping people in the real world. According to the World Health Organization, one in 10 people across the globe don't have access to safe drinking water. Though water covers 70% of the world, only two and a half percent is fresh water. The rest contains salt. Some of the most drought-stricken areas in the world are you know, sunny beaches where everybody wants a vacation. That's where Sorrow steps in, turning waves into fresh water. Here's how it all works. These pontoons allow the system to float on the ocean. When the waves rock the device back and forth, this giant pendulum swings, powering the pumps that allow this membrane to perform reverse osmosis. By the time the water makes it through this membrane, you get pure H2O. Entrepreneur Fred Wagner came up with the concept, then handed it off to Sana and Matthews as part of their senior design program, pairing engineering students with industrial partners. The first thing I did when I got the project was to go on Wikipedia and find out what reverse osmosis was. So we've come a long way since then. After Wagner introduced the concept, the students used software to draft a digital design, then spent hours in the shop bringing the blueprint to life. And by the time that they graduated, Everything had happened except we had not put water through the machine and got drinking water out. Months later, they loaded Soros onto a trailer and traveled to Wrightsville Beach for testing. Wave after wave, so sure enough, wave after wave, the system turned salty ocean water into drinkable water. To actually build it and see it there, it's just really satisfying. After tasting the fruits of their labor, they sent a sample off to the lab where test results confirmed. And we made good water. Back at the shop, Sana and Matthews rolled up their sleeves and started on a second prototype. Soros version one takes up about as much space as a compact car. The engineers say the next system will be much smaller, measuring about the size of a tabletop. It'll also be more efficient, producing about 500 gallons of water a day compared to about 60 from the old model. What we're trying to do is make something that is simple and cheap that anyone could use. The team says it's too soon to put a price tag on the system, but they did speculate on the cost for clean water. So we hope to shoot for about a penny a gallon or less if we can. Their goal is to scale this system to make 5,000 gallons of water a day. But until Soros hits the big blue ocean, the company stays in the red. Wagner says he's invested close to $200,000 in the project, which costs about $10,000 a month to operate. What we really need is about twice that much money to go faster. And that is what my hope uh, and my direction is, is to find somebody else who can actually use this product. We just need somebody to say yes, come put it in. For now, the team juggles working in the shop with shopping around for buyers, pitching the system to potential customers in island nations and coastal areas. I invest in people and I look for people that won't quit and they, they're resourceful. And they're, they're good team members. Sana and Matthews say this isn't what they had in mind when they enrolled in engineering school. And working at a startup means they're earning a little less than entry-level engineers at established companies. But you can't put a price on experience. Sometimes it's hard to, to see the whole picture, but it's definitely been a, a wild trip. Wave after wave, so each Continuously working to redefine their design, the team paves the way for small-scale water desalination, combining engineering with entrepreneurship as they embark on an adventure to provide affordable clean water to countries across the globe. 
For Carolina Impact, I'm Danielle Koser reporting. Thanks so much, Danielle.